Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rust Belt Collector here, and you wouldn't believe it, but I actually found this Walmart exclusive at Walmart. I know, it's crazy, right? Like, to actually find something on the shelf in 2020? Good grief, distribution has been bad recently. But yeah, here it is, the Ahsoka Tano from Clone Wars Season 7, 6-inch Black Series figure. I'm going to be unboxing it, taking a look at it, and seeing how good or bad it is. Although, I'm going to be honest right now, just taking a look at the figure in the box, it looks pretty darn cool. This is one of the new Black Series figures, so of course it's going to have this nice art piece on the side. And I do have one other figure from this line to show kind of how this works. So, of course, it kind of brings together a mosaic of characters. This is the Kamino Trooper, and then this is Ahsoka, and then the next one would be, I believe, that is the 332nd 501st Trooper. Um, that would go right here. However, unfortunately, I could not find that figure. Uh, this was the only one that was left in, like, the display box that shipped to Walmart, where it would have all the Clone Wars figures. So this is, you know, this is the only one I got. I did pre-order the other ones from Walmart. Um, however, they have not shipped yet, so uh, that could be a long wait. Although it's weird that they show up in stores before they ship to me when I pre-ordered the day they were released. But I digress. Let's take a look at this figure. Like I said, packaging, really cool art piece here. Backside, you have a brief bio, another character artwork there. This is number two, so this does line up with the Camino Trooper like I just showed. Uh, that is number one in the line, Clone Trooper is number three, and then the Mandalorian, two, the two Mandalorian figures from this wave also stack up alongside that one. And then just, you know, nothing really to talk about there. That legally is on the bottom. All good stuff. Now let's crack this packaging open and take a look at the figure. And there we go, all out of the package and posed up fairly nicely. I feel like this figure does allow for some good posability, which suits the character of Ahsoka rather well because she's always a little bit more of an athletic Jedi in her fighting style, and this figure suits that rather nicely. So starting off, let's take a look at the accessories. It, of course, comes with her two lightsabers, the standard lightsaber and the shorter... I don't really know what this one is called, but it's a shorter lightsaber. It's like a dagger lightsaber. So, yeah, nice detail on the hilt there. Shorter blade that is detachable, just like that. And it appears, yes, that you can just pop that if it will work. It's kind of difficult because this is a softer rubber, and this is not really wanting to peg into that, but... There we go. Yeah, so the lightsaber hilts can attach to her uh, her waistband there. Then the same thing here, another really nice hilt, longer lightsaber blade, still detachable, and that same thing can apply here. It will just kind of peg onto there. It doesn't seem like it's a, uh, a very good fit. It doesn't really want to stay in there very well, and so I feel like that's going to fall out rather quickly, but you can get both of them on there. Um, they will stay, like, they're not gonna just fall off from that, but it seems like maybe a little bit of a, a nudge or falling off the shelf certainly will knock those loose. But it is nice that they add that feature in. I think it's really cool, and it does look nice if you just wanna display her, maybe add attention with the troopers or something where it's less combat related. Now, that is all that she comes with in ways of accessories, just the two lightsabers with removable blades. Now, let's talk about just overall the detail on this figure. Uh, I believe this is an entirely new sculpt for her. There's no reused parts from, like, the Rebels Ahsoka that came out a few years back and then got re-released this year. But, yeah, this is an entirely new sculpt based off Season 7, the Mandalore arc. It looks fairly screen accurate from what I can tell. I know some people were saying that there was a few inaccuracies, but... Then again, some of the people I follow on Instagram are a little too picky, in my opinion. I mean, these are figures, after all, they are they are toys, and so some inaccuracy is to be expected. The face printing on this figure looks really, really nice. They did an excellent job capturing kind of a cross between realistic and animated Ahsoka. It looks really cool. They got good paint detail on her head as well, and that also applies just about everywhere on this figure. Uh, the paint detail is really nice. These fine line details are really crisp. They're not like off-centered or smudged. 
There's really fine details on her gauntlets as well, which is just awesome. You know, it's nice to see that kind of uh, crisp detail, not offset or anything like that with this figure. And the sculpt detail really does match with the paint. I mean, the paint's really crisp. The sculpt is really crisp. There's a lot of great details packed into this armored skirt type thing. I'm not really sure what you would call this, but it's really nice. It's also done in a flexible here. It's done in like a, a flexible plastic so you can get the legs forward kicking outward, kicking back, and this is not going to get in the way or impede that. So that's always nice to see on a figure that is as highly posable as this one is. But let's talk about the articulation on this figure. At the head you have a double ball joint so you can get some tilt side to side. You can get not really anything forward or back to speak of just because the sculpt with the uh, the Leku or whatever. I don't know, are they Leku? Because she's not a Twi'lek, she's a Torgata or something. I don't remember the uh, alien species that she is, but um, yeah, the the sculpt just kind of gets in the way, so she can't really get forward or back, but definitely a side to side and some head tilt, which is good enough, I feel like. Then here at the shoulders, I feel like this is meant to be a bit of a butterfly joint, but it really doesn't give you much in ways of actual articulation, so it's kind of pointless. But there is a hinge and a swivel here, so you can swivel it all the way around hinge it all the way up to there. Then at the elbows, there is a hinge and a swivel, so it's a single jointed elbow. You get just past 90, spin it all the way around. Uh, one thing that I do wish though, is that they'd painted her elbow joint there, this skin color, instead of having it cast in the blue, since technically her gauntlets end right there, and that's where her skin tone should start. Uh, it's a small gripe, it's not a big deal, but you know, it's it would be nice. On a $20 figure, actually $25 figure, I feel like they could go the extra mile and add that in. Then at the wrists, we have the usual Black Series deal where this one is an in and an out swivel, and this one is an up and a down hinge and swivel. So that works well enough for this figure, it's, you know, it's standard. I will say that because of this character's style, those those pegs might be a little bit delicate, so be cautious when you are posing the, the wrist joints because I feel like with the size of the wrist that peg can't be very large and uh, that could be a problem. They could snap, they could break, and you don't want that. But then moving on to the torso, we have a ball jointed torso which gets a really nice range of motion, you know, back, forward, side to side. Really good for those kinds of crazy, you know, Jedi poses that you want to have when you're messing with a uh, skilled Jedi such as Ahsoka. Then down at the hips we have the standard ball joint and thigh swivel so you can get it only really outward to right there. You can get it forward, you can spin the thigh swivel all the way around if you need to. Then at the knee we have a double jointed knee which gets you all the way back to there which is I think a pretty good range for this figure. And then at the foot you have your hinge and your rocker. This one is a little bit loose just on my figure. It doesn't seem to be maybe like fully set in there or maybe there's something going on there that I just can't see. You can kind of tell the way like this one is nice and flush with the uh, the cuff of the boot there and this one's kind of not. It's a little bit out there. Um, it's not a big deal. It's probably just fine but it's just a little bit loose so probably just one small little factory error on my figure. Not that this is going to be with everyone's figure but yeah, so there's a hinge and a rocker there. You can hinge it all the way back to there, forward to there, and rock it back and forth. So I think overall this is a really great figure, and I'm really glad that they did come around and finally make some Season 7 figures. It took them way too long, and honestly I'm a little disappointed with just the sheer lack of figures. Like, all four figures from Season 7, that's all we're going to get. At least for now, I know that there's some that are slated to be coming down the line, but... If you think about it, when The Mandalorian dropped, we had figures from The Mandalorian with no spoilers. You know, we had The Mandalorian himself, we had Cara Dune. They all dropped, like, right before Season 1 dropped of The Mandalorian. And they knew about Clone Wars Season 7 for quite a while, and yet it took them... I mean, has it been almost a year? I feel like it's been almost a year that they were just like, Oh yeah, hey, um, here's some figures from Season 7, and... I just think that that could have been handled better. They definitely could have released these figures a little bit closer to the uh, the actual release of those episodes. It, it would have probably boosted the marketing a little bit better. But, I mean, that's Hasbro for you these days, so 
We take what we can get, and I think that this is a pretty good figure to get. I wish everyone the best of luck in finding these on shelves or, uh, you know, getting them online. If you missed your pre-order, then I don't know what your chances of finding it are going to be, but best of luck to everyone. Be checking BrickSeek, um, be checking Pop Finder, whatever you like to use to check store inventory. That's actually how I found these. I found them on BrickSeek. It said that there was some in stock. I went there, and there were two Ahsokas left sitting there on the shelf. I was able to actually um, help a guy out that was there in stores. He was trying to find one for his son, and I was like, oh, dude, they're on an end cap. They weren't in, like, the toy aisle. They were in, like, an end cap over by the Barbie section for whatever reason. So uh, it, it helped him out. I was happy to do that since right now toy collecting is just kind of sucky especially if you're a kid like if i was a kid right now i'd be super sad because like you couldn't find the figures in stores to save your life but um, i digress from that point this is a pretty solid figure as you can see it looks really nice good detail good articulation and overall yeah definitely get it if you can especially you know you clone wars nerds out there like myself this is a great figure to have the only way it could be better the only way is if it was three and three quarter inch just because i really am a sucker for three and three quarter inch versus black series but it still is pretty solid now with all of my rambling out of the way uh there's just one final comparison let's take a look at like size and scale here since she is a bit shorter which does fit with like correct scaling of the character um but this is just her next to the new clone trooper mold so you can see she's about a head shorter than the clone trooper and this will be the same clone trooper that uh, like the mold is the same as the 332nd ahsoka trooper that comes out in this line so this is what you're going to be looking at you know if you end up finding one of those so yeah there you go that's uh that's pretty cool right there you go so i think that's probably where i'm going to be wrapping this review up i feel like i rambled quite a bit in this one so hopefully you guys don't mind too much and stuck around all the way through if you did, I appreciate you even more than normal. Um, but as usual, you know, if you guys want to check out my social media, links down in the description, merch site down there as well for some cool t-shirts with the Rust Belt Collector logo on it. If you guys want to send anything into the channel, P.O. Box address is down there as well. And as always, guys, I will catch you all in the next video.